Hey Chiefs Kingdom, how excited are you for the 2020 NFL season? For me, I'm scaling it at about a 12 out of 10, with 10 being the highest. Go above and beyond because I need football back in my life and I want to watch the Chiefs defend their Super Bowl title. Let me know, scale it from 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. Training camp just around the corner, Chiefs got to cut some players. So I'll go through six players that the Chiefs could cut to get down to 80 players for their roster limit on today's video, starting right now. So a little background info before we get into some player specifics here. NFL announced that rosters have to be uh, trimmed down to 80 players. Kansas City currently sits at 86. Most NFL teams between 85 and 90 right now. Teams are starting to trickle, release information, and release that players are getting let go. And the Chiefs have let go of a couple as well. Javaris Davis, which I was a little bit surprised of. The UDFA out of Auburn. I know a lot of you guys were high on him. Cody White, the wide receiver. Chiefs have a ton of wideouts. Stay tuned. Uh, I may have a couple on my list as well. But they still got to cut six more players. And I'll get into some names I think could be candidates to be those guys. But first, I want to ask you this. Do you have a face covering? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Obviously, the coronavirus has been in our lives for about four and a half months now here in the United States. So let me know. Y for yes or N for no. And even if the answer is yes, why not upgrade and get yourself a Chiefs face covering at chatsports.com slash Chiefs mask. You can get these cool Mahomes two packs, the just Chiefs generic two packs, all the way from single to four packs are available at chatsports.com slash Chiefs masks. Guys, COVID's not going away. And uh, if we want to go to games, especially, you're going to have to wear a mask. So if you don't have one, I encourage you to get one. And if you want to upgrade, places to do it at chatsports.com slash Chiefs mask. Put the link in the comments, and I'll put it in the description. That way you can just click and shop today. All right, let's get into it here. Elijah McGuire is first up here. And look, he's done some decent things in his career, was injured all of last year, did not play. The problem is this is a deep running back group for Kansas City. I don't see a path for him making the roster. I actually think it's a better thing for him to get cut now and to potentially get on board with another team before training camp begins. I think that gives him the best shot to be on a roster in 2020. Never been a great rusher, under three and a half yards per carry, but rem remember that was behind a poor offensive line up in New York. A better receiving back, you fantasy football nerds. Uh, he was a popular flex pickup a couple of seasons ago. Uh, can offer a lot in the passing game. The problem is, again, they already have Elijah McGuire type of backs on the back end of this depth chart, like a DeAndre Washington, like a Darwin Thompson. He's not going to get on the roster over those two guys or even a Darrell Williams who the Chiefs like a lot. And obviously, Damian Williams and the rookie Clyde edwards Lair, you know, they're at the top of the depth chart. The Chiefs aren't carrying six running backs. They're probably not carrying five. And if they do, I still don't see how Elijah McGuire cracks the list for the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, Damian Williams and Clyde edwards Lair, your top two guys here. And uh, they're going to be battling for who is the lead back in 2020. Who will lead the Chiefs in rushing? I'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. You can scroll on down there, engage in the comment section, and answer right there. Type DW for Damian Williams. Type CEH for Clyde edwards Lair. Next up here on my Chiefs Cut Candidates videos, we gear up for training camp, is Justice Shelton Mosley, the UDFA out of Vanderbilt. Kind of more of a return specialist slash gadget player. Was a grad transfer at Vandy this past season. Didn't really do much in the receiving game. Was more of a punt and kick returner type. Didn't even have 100 yards receiving on the season. Now he's got some speed. He's got some quickness, some twitchiness, which is similar to a, you know some of the Chiefs receivers when you think of guys like Tyreek Hill and McCold Hardman. But those two players are also really good receivers as well. They're you know polished players. Just as Shelton Mosley was UDFA for a reason, played at Vanderbilt for a reason, because he's got limited upside. I just don't see where he fits in. Now you're saying, oh, maybe he could be an elite uh, return specialist type. Chiefs have those type of guys. They don't need Justice Shelton Mosley uh, to make the roster here and provide that role. I just don't see where he fits on this Chiefs football team. Before we continue, we got a mailbag soon. You guys know the drill. Or if you're a first time watcher, we do Chiefs Q&As all the time. Best chance to get your question on the show is use hashtag Chiefs and ask me your questions down in the comment section. We'll answer as many of them as we can on a mailbag video later this week. 
Aleva Hifo, another wide receiver here. I teased that there could be multiple. I got two on my list, Shelton Mosley, and then now uh, Hifo here out of BYU. Three-year starter, did some good things in college, has some explosiveness, but he's undersized at 5'10", doesn't have top-end speed. Also, uh, like, uh, like Mosley there, is a decent return type, but again, the Chiefs have 14 receivers on their roster, and that's, uh, you know, about seven or eight too many, right? Like, you're only going to carry six, maybe seven on your final 53-man roster. And I should mention that, too. Like, this is just to trim down to 80. The Chiefs and every other team will still have to go from 80 to 53. So these guys I'm cutting here probably weren't going to make the final 53-man roster anyway. So keep that in mind as we go through this video here. And numbers on screen, decent, you know, BYU, inconsistent quarterback play the past couple of years. But again, you look at the depth chart here for Kansas City. Like, it's one of the best receiving cores in the NFL. Where is a UDFA going to fit on this depth chart? It's just not very likely, especially since rookie mini camps didn't happen, offseason programs didn't happen. Just makes it that much harder for a guy like Aleva Hipo to make a roster in 2020. But who is your sleeper to watch during training camp? In most years, it is a UDFA type, but a lot of them aren't going to get the opportunities that we're used to at training camp, uh, you know, this time of year. Keep a player in mind. Let me know who your sleeper to watch during camp is in the comments section. One more offensive player here, Yasir Durant. You know, I went back and forth on the offensive line uh, to try and let one of these guys go. The problem is, is he played strictly tackle in college, and he's a massive guy. 6'7", 330, went to Mizzou, so you got some local flair there as well. The problem is, tackle's not the issue for Kansas City. Plenty of depth there. If he could provide some ability at guard, I think that would have some value, but, you know, Andy Reid typically likes guys who are mobile on the inside. He's not a mobile player, so I don't think he would fit. They brought in Colegio Simley. He's expected to play right guard, but even he's more of a tackle type historically. So, you know, I just don't see a UDFA tackle, you know, making the roster here. You drafted Lucas Niang in the third round. You got guys like Mike Rimmers who can play guard or tackle. I just don't see it happening for Durant, which is unfortunate because I do think he has some ability having started 33 games in the SEC. We've got a couple more players to get to, but before we do, I encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel uh, at youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Just hit that big red subscribe button. We've got the latest Chiefs rumors for you guys. We're breaking the latest Chiefs news. Even while I was gone on my uh, honey move, Tom Downey stepped in, and he broke down the Chris Jones contract for you guys. So we're keeping you guys up to date as information comes down. Hit that big red button. Share that link with a friend. It's youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. That'll also be in the description. Copy, paste, text it to your buddies. Make it easy. Let's get the channel growing even more than it already has. All right, I got a couple of defensive players here. Dorian O'Daniel. This one's kind of my surprise guy on here because you guys are like, 2018 third-round pick. They're going to move on from him. I'm not saying it's super likely, but I do think there's a decent chance he doesn't make the final 53-man roster. He's been very disappointing. Has some special teams value, but hasn't really improved since, uh, you know, being that day two pick a couple of years ago. And, hey, it might be better for his future to get cut now and to restart somewhere else and, you know, get a chance with another team. Because the thing with the Chiefs, too, you look at the depth chart, sure, maybe he's your fourth best linebacker on paper right now. Chiefs play nickel a lot. Like, they do not play a lot of three linebacker sets. You draft a guy like Willie Gay Jr., who you're expecting to play a big role on this team, that makes a guy like Dorian O'Daniel expendable. He hasn't played a lot, you know, gotten a lot of snaps on defense, especially in year two. Played more in year one, but isn't that a red flag as well, that his numbers and his, and his snaps went down from year one to year two? I don't know what his future looks like in Kansas City. Cutting him now might be best for both parties in the end. So what do you guys think? Should Kansas City cut Dorian O'Daniel? Type one for yes, type two for no. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Andrew Soro up next here. Kind of an interesting path here, uh, this guy. Signed on as a UDFA last year, didn't make the team, didn't make the practice squad, so kind of hit the reset button. It then played in the XFL this past spring, did some decent things. It's kind of a rotation safety there. Had an interception, had a pass breakup. Remember, the XFL only played four or five games, so obviously the statistics aren't going to be huge there. But then the Chiefs brought him back in June, but... With, you know, the NFL mandating to reduce the 80, 80 roster spots by training camp. He hasn't really gotten to do much since there hadn't been a, a real offseason here. If he didn't make it last year in a traditional offseason, 
why would he make it this time? The one caveat, Juan Thornhill might miss some camp, if not uh, on into the regular season. Maybe that means the Chiefs will keep a couple of extra safeties around for training camp just to have bodies, but I don't see a path for him making the 53-man roster, which means, you know, you got six or seven safeties. One of them may have to go before training camp begins, and I think if they're going to cut one, it's going to be Andrew Soro. So let me know. Name a player the Chiefs should cut before training camp begins. 86 players on the roster right now. Got to get down to 80. I went through my six guys. Let me know if you think it's one of those players, someone else I didn't mention. Who should the Chiefs cut before training camp begins? And I'll do a quick recap here. Uh, Elijah McGuire, uh, a couple of UDFA wide receivers, Justin Shelton Mosley, Aleva Hifo, as well as my Chiefs cut candidates before camp begins. Yes, sir. Durant out of Missouri, I like him, but I just don't think he makes this team. Dorian O'Daniel and then Andrew Soro. These are my six cut candidates. Training camp's around the corner, and the Chiefs got to make some decisions very, very soon.